Hey guys, Joe here. Really quick, what's that? Kind of looks like a dog barking at the moon. But it's not. It's a raging bull. Well, technically not, because Taurus does make a raging bull. But it is a Taurus, and that's what we're taking a look at here today on the channel. If you're new to the channel, I like to do some firearm reviews. So if you like that kind of stuff, get subscribed, hit the bell, all that good stuff, so that you get notified of when they come out. I typically borrow them from Liberty Arms down in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Just Google it. I'm not allowed to link them in the description and tell them that you'd like to buy one of these. Speaking of which... All their tags are printed upside down. It's really annoying, but uh, I'm sure they'll... Oh, wait, sorry. You can just go ahead and see that it is a $485 pistol. That is expensive for a Taurus semi-auto, but when you see the feature list that this thing has, you may change your tune. Also, a lot of places are charging full MSRP because it is a brand new gun, and a lot of stores like to get in on that and charge full price. We don't do that at Liberty Arms. We try to give you a good deal. Inside the soft case, which is reminiscent of like an FN 509 tactical, you get pouches. Up top, you do get a pouch that holds your warranty card, a coupon, as well as your owner's manual. Very typical stuff. The lower compartment uses hook and loop enclosures to hold your gun and several accessories. Let's go ahead and take the firearm out. Very good looking piece here, and we will be getting back to that. Let's go ahead and clear it. As you can see, nothing in it. Continuing inside of the case, you have several different pouches. These two pouches are for your magazines. You get two 17-rounders. They have these little base pads on them to make them fit flush with the frame. Up here, you do have optics mounting plates because this is an optics-ready pistol. Kind of hard to be a tactical pistol in 2022 and not have optics. And you have a spot for a gun lock as well as a second recoil spring, which we will be talking about, and we'll be talking about that pouch as well. But let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video, and that is the Taurus G3 Tactical. As you can see, it's finished in a very nice two-tone, three-tone finish, because it does have a lot of black accents on it. FDE with mud. I like calling it mud. Sue me. And this is a full-size pistol, about the same size as a Glock 17. As I said in the beginning, it is optics ready, has the Toro cut, Taurus optics ready option is what I believe that stands for. And they do give you a set of suppressor height sights right out of the box because they also give you a threaded barrel. Standard half by 28 thread, so it should take all your major branded suppressors. Very nice. No external manual safety. All the other G3s had a safety on them. Some people hate them, some people like them. I don't care either way, so I am. if it has one, I use it. If it doesn't, I don't. It does have a trigger safety, though, so you can pull the trigger all you want, but unless you depress the trigger safety with it, it won't go off. We'll talk about the trigger here in a second as well. Looking on the exterior, it is, again, a Cerakoted slide with a DLC-coated barrel, and I believe it's a Cerakoted frame, or it might just be color-infused when they manufactured it. Very nice feeling, though. These Taurus grips on here, very aggressive, but not cutting. And I like that because it makes sure that you secure yourself to the firearm thumb cuts so you can run the gun either way. It's not ambidextrous, only has a slide lock on one side and the magazine only sticks out on one side, but it does appear to be reversible. Takedowns are on both sides, just like a Glock though. Standard 1913 pick rail for your lights, lasers, bazookas, and your serial number appears there. And there, which we'll talk about in a minute as well. Again, another departure for the firearm. Overall, the feel in the hand is very nice. I think they got the size and the weight and the feel right. It's a little bit under 30 ounces. It's like 28 ounces when it's dry, which is very comfortable to carry and shoot. Has some curves up here that are a little bit more... Uh, softened compared to a standard G3. That's probably for holstering and unholstering your firearm. Undercut here to the trigger guard could be a little bit deeper, but that's something somebody can do for you if you don't like where it is. I actually think it feels really nice. Magazines appear to be Mechgar, pretty sure. The rear seam sealed mags are a little bit questionable in my opinion, but they seem to hold up pretty well. Actually says made in Brazil, so this might be Taurus's own magazines. Uh, I've run into 1911 mags when they're friction welded like that, and they don't last. So keep that in mind if you're going to run like plus P's or plus P pluses. You may have issues with your mags. 
Let's talk about the mysterious pouch in the bag real quick, since we are down to that section. It holds your gun lock, but that's not what it's for. The reason this gun is a threaded barrel with suppressor height sights is because they assume that whoever buys this is probably going to go all suppressor on it. And if you do that, you might want to carry your suppressor with you. And as you can see, this pouch is about the right size, plus it has, obviously, extra length in case you have a super long suppressor to carry said suppressor, be it a silencer co, a dead air, whatever. Uh, I don't think an Osprey will fit. I don't think those big square ones will fit, but a standard round nine millimeter suppressor should fit in there just fine. And since these are movable, you just take that plate, put it back here, gun there, you're good to go. Half by 28 thread thread protector is not, doesn't have a crush washer or an O-ring. So you have to be careful and make sure that doesn't back off during standard use of the firearm. But if you do lose it, they're cheap. Uh, you can buy two of these for like 11 bucks. It is nice that the optics plates it comes with are metal. They are not plastic plates, and that should allow you to put most optics onto this particular gun. Slowly putting things away as I'm talking to you. Kind of coincidentally, inside the gun lock area, they did include a second spring. The reason they did that is because if you are going to run this gun with a suppressor or a compensator, it changes the recoil action of the firearm. It makes it so that it doesn't want to come back as far, so you get a short stroke situation, which means that the gun comes back not quite far enough to eject the shell reliably, or it just might not actually cycle right at all, and then you get a stovepipe jammed around, etc., by running this spring in there, it gives it a softer spring rate, which allows the slide to move farther with less pressure. Now that could also present a problem if you're running that spring with full power loads, but if you're running a suppressor, you probably want to swap out your spring and that will help you avoid stove pipes and failures to feed, failures to extract, etc. Let's go ahead and talk about the trigger. Single action with double strike capabilities. That's different from a double action to single action, and it's not quite a straight single action. A double action to single action is a gun that can be started in double action with a round in the chamber. This gun is not one of those because it doesn't have a decocker. If you could decock the pistol and still have that double strike capability, then you would have a double action or single action, or double action to single action. This gun is single action with double strike capabilities. What that actually means is, once you load the gun, it's going to reduce the pull weight of the trigger, make it a much shorter trigger, much lighter trigger. And I'll show you the trigger pull right now. Very, it's a long pull because of the double strike, but it's not heavy and it's not junky. It just comes here to the wall and breaks. Reset is right where the wall is and breaks. You can hear it, you don't really feel it much. Could also be my nerve damage. You guys will have to let me know if you own one of them. However, if you were to pull the trigger and the round doesn't go off, all you have to do is just reset the trigger all the way. So let's say that you did that, okay? We just pulled the trigger, bullet didn't go off, you let it out all the way. And then the gun has a much heavier pull because it's resetting the striker, giving you a second chance at hitting the same round. Now, if it doesn't go off that second time, wait a few seconds, do your rack and clear, and then go into your next shot. Personal opinion, but that's how that system is designed to be used. Let's go ahead and take her apart to do that. Let's go ahead and take the threaded barrel protector back off because you can't take the barrel out of the slide while that is on it. Let's go ahead and lock it back, show that it is clear, drop it. Because of the double strike, that's actually not going to work the right way, but there we go. Yeah, there you go. With a standard single action like a Glock, you pull the trigger, then you can pull down the tabs, and it'll allow you to take it off. But because of the system that this has, I forget that and try to pull it off. You still have to pull the trigger once you drop the tabs. Here is your standard spring, and you can see that it's actually green versus the blue one. The barrel itself comes out just like any other standard barrel. There's the threads, there's the coating. Like I said, DLC coating, which is pretty nice, which hopefully means that it will hold up to some wear and abuse over time. I like that the plate screws in from the top, some SIGs screw in from the bottom. A bunch of the X-Series guns do that. It's a little inconvenient to change your optics if it's like that. Squared off ejection port, 
because that's how the barrel locks up. Looking inside of it, there is a hole in the dust cover that allows you to get to the screw for the front sight. Again, Glock style sight, so you could put a night sight, uh, tall sight, and have night sight, suppressor height sights, and co-witness through your red dot. That's what I would do if you're going to continue to run this high of a sight. You could also just run standard height sights because if you run like a hollow sun or anything with a rear trench, you could co-witness that way. There's your drop safety as well as the, you have to push that in if you want to take out your extractor. A little bit more complicated than Glock, but not by a whole lot. Yeah, fit and finish looks nice. Looks like they took a little bit of weight out here in order to lighten it up, but nothing back there. Very nice. Looking at the frame, it's basically a standard G3 frame, just doesn't have the manual safeties. The finish is nice. This is why I think it's actually the color was infused when they were manufacturing it because it goes all the way through solidly, even through all the holes. Over here, as I was saying before, it has two serial numbers on the frame, one in its standard spot and one here on the side. My thinking is that means this whole fire control group will come out as one if you just take out these roll pins. If that's the case, then it's more of a chassis system and allows you to change this into a different frame or replace this frame if it gets damaged and still have the correct serial number because here the trigger group, the fire control group, is what is serialized in the United States. I think that's kind of cool. We'll have to wait and see if Taurus actually releases different frames. Maybe they'll do a compact frame. Maybe they'll do like a different cut frame. Who knows? Maybe they'll go Wilson combat frames. That would be kind of fun. Take your barrel, put it back in, put your threaded barrel protector back on. Should be on camera. Yeah, there we go. I'm off to the left today. It's probably why the audio sounds like it's only on one side. Sorry. Haven't gone back to my office yet, and I'm going to set my office up so that I can do all of these videos there. So bear with me. Again, get subscribed so that you can see more professionally made videos down the line. Do, do, do. All you have to do is line up your frame to your slide and pull it back and make sure it works. And there you go. That is the Taurus G3 Tactical by Taurus Manufacturing. What do I think of it? I think it's a pretty nice firearm. And if I hadn't just bought a Canic Meta, I'd probably consider trading that towards this. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let one of you guys get it. Plus, I've been holding out for another version of the G3 anyways. Uh, I want you guys to get a chance at it. Plus, if I can get the special edition one that I'm trying to get, I will make a video on it. But if you're interested in one of these, contact Liberty Arms. Say, hey man, saw that on the Jiminy Show. I want to get one. Can you hook me up? And they will do so. Come back next week for more videos on the fire damage firearm repairs. I've gotten two of them fixed as well as some test firing done. So I'll put up a short or two of those. Come back for all that. Thanks for checking out this video. And as always, I'll talk to you later.